so just to put a little context in this video that's coming up, um, I used to work at a company called Prolific Interactive, uh, located in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, we're an agency that built mobile apps for, for companies and, and different brands. Uh, so I left back in January to pursue becoming a meditation teacher full-time and figuring out uh, potential opportunities uh, to integrate uh, my product and engineering background uh, into the mix. So starting next week, I'll be teaching uh, meditation for the next four weeks. So this is kind of the intro presentation. This is my sales pitch for uh, my former colleagues to get interested into the program and commit for the next four weeks. So uh, check it out. Hopefully this resonates. If you're at a company that uh, thinks could use this as well, uh, specifically meditation, uh, reach out. It was October of 2015. It was the fourth quarter of the Bobble Bar project and inside I was collapsing. So right, every project has its unforeseen technical and design challenges, but uh, we had a lot. Right, Cassie? <laughs> um, but so the way the project conditions, or rather how I was managing those project conditions, uh, really brought an issue to the surface that my, cr that my self critical talk was causing chronic stress. So, what chronic stress basically looks like is for me was that I would barely sleep. Uh, I was constantly exhausted, constantly frustrated, constantly questioning my decisions, and um, at some point my face just kind of locked up from all the tension that was being caused. So I said to myself, I mean, I'm 26, this is unhealthy. Um, so I picked up meditation out of kind of this, this helplessness. I mean, I'm, I'm sure maybe some of you may have experienced this in some way or form during burnout, you know, when it's crunch time and we got to get to the finish line for uh, releasing an app. So a year and a half later, I kind of stand before you as a meditation teacher in training. And so why? Why an engineer to PM to meditation teacher, a.k.a. the Zen master? <laughs> um, and that's really because over that year and a half, I, I was able to uh, come across a really pow some powerful insight. You know, we, we tell the same stories in our heads over and over about the, our thoughts and our emotions. Oh, uh, today I left, I left work and I didn't really get anything done. It was a bunch of meetings. I'm unproductive. Oh, I'm an unproductive person. Oh, uh, you know, I, I went through a lot of emotions today. I mean, I'm feeling pissed off, I'm stressed, I'm a stressful person. So we tell these stories over and over in our head. And through meditation, what you learn is that I don't have to associate myself with those thoughts and emotions. I can just observe them. I don't know if any of you have tried Headspace, but there's this analogy that I really like, is that they, they have this little figure in between traffic and the analogy is that those are our thoughts and emotions. But you can basically stand on the outside on the emergency lane and just watching them go back and forth. So basically what happens is, is okay, if I'm not my thoughts and my emotions, who am I? Who is this observer? And that's really where things get interesting because you end up befriending this new version of yourself. You end up being okay with you, the, the negative and the positive and end up loving yourself a bit more. I know a lot of people get into meditation uh, for a lot of different reasons, right? There's stress and anxiety. There's people who want to live more healthier lives. And then there's people who want to just be more creative and productive. But what ultimately happens is all these reasons converge and into this place where you live a more happier life. You have a, 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 str a more strong inner state of happiness. So a lot of us choose to be happy from external goals, right? Like, oh, I want to get this promotion, or oh, I want this material thing, which I'm the same way. But when we actually get it, we're happy for like a minute, and then we're like, all right, what's next? Um, so it's, it's really important to have this inner state of inner state of happiness. 
so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I've seen over time. And this is why, um, you know, me and Jacqueline have been talking back and forth. Like, how do we introduce meditation uh, to prolific? Because I know a lot of the experiences that I went through, a lot of us share. We tend to personalize our problems, right? Like, oh, I'm, I have a highly active mind. Meditation is not for me. Or I'm too stressed. Or not, not, not everyone is going through what I'm going through. And, and so I think as millennials, we don't talk about these shared experiences enough about what's really happening inside. So over the next four weeks, I'll be coming in once a week. We still have to work out the exact uh, details, but once a week I'll be coming in in the mornings and basically teaching you medit teaching meditation. And the idea is that I'll be starting from square one. So if you've never meditated before, uh, this, is, this is for you. But also, if you have your practice, um, you know, I guarantee you'll learn something. Because even for people who have their practice, the biggest challenge is that they don't make it a daily habit. I like to think about meditation as like your, your immune system, right? Like we eat well, we have a healthy diet, we work out to prepare ourselves for when we might get sick so that we can handle those situations a bit more gracefully. And I like to think about meditation as well. Like we prepare ourselves for those situations where we, that may cause stress and anxiety. Um, so yeah, we'll be working on, on that for the next four weeks is how do we, we get out of that stage or how do, we, how do we make meditation a daily habit? Because a lot of obstacles come up, right? Um, procrastination, fatigue, dullness, these are all things that get in the way of making uh, meditation a daily habit. So um, exactly what kind of meditation we're learning, there's a bunch of different ones, but uh, it's called mindfulness. And that's really about bringing your awareness to the, to the present moment. Um, so Harvard did a study and found that we spend about 46.9% of our lives wandering in thought. So it's dwelling on the past and wor worrying about what or may or may not happen in the future. So what's accessible to us at the end of the day is, is really what's happening at this moment in time. So through, through bringing your focus to the breath, we, bring, we grow this muscle of bringing ourselves to the present. Um, so yeah, mindfulness is the meditation that we'd be learning. Uh, two things that I'm looking for, I guess for people who, who are interested and want to join, is, is one, commitment. Um, so just being wholeheartedly open to, to what you may experience or just learning something new. And then also trying to make it a part of your daily habit in the beginning. Uh, if you find out that meditation is not for you, I mean, I get it. It, it, you know, it's not, it may not be for everybody, but I think it can really help. Um, then that's fine. Um, and then also, too, uh, being a part of, of, of a community. So I've been, I'm a part of a couple meditation communities and also started my own. But I think one of the most, impo most powerful things is conversation and talking about maybe some of these experiences that, that we have and that we share. So just being open to potentially sharing experiences 